So hi everyone, here's Tong Meng from UIUC, and I'm pre pretty honored to present our paper to you today. And it's called PCCV Bauche, Online Learning Congestion Control. So in this paper, we deal with the problem of internet congestion control, leveraging the online learning theory. So because of the surge of traffic due to many video streaming applications, nowadays the need for better congestion control protocols has been more and more important. And although there are so many existing TCP variants, but they still cannot deliver pretty good performance, even after decades of development, and also with so many different variants tuned for different uh, uh, network conditions. To know how sub suboptimal it is, just try watching the UEFA football, uh, Euro Football Champion League one hour ago using the Wi-Fi connection in this hotel, and you will know. So to improve the performance of TCP, there are some recent proposals. And three examples of them are first RAMI, and then PCC BIOS, and BBR. So TCP RAMI use an offline optimizer to generate a TCP style protocol using user input of some network assumptions and the objectives. And PCC, which is designed by, by some prior students in our group, uh, utilize a online learning framework with a, utility, uh, with a utility function. And BBR, proposed by Google last year, use a separate probing of band, bottleneck bandwidth and minimum RTT. So based on our uh, evaluation results, so BBR may sometimes come across the conversion stability issues because of its separate bandwidth and RTT probing. And we also think TCP Remy is still, in essence, TCP, and cannot totally avoid the flaws in the different TCP variants. So anyway, in this work, we decide to continue to explore the online learning-based congestion control with the PCSA's architecture. So, before going to the details of PCC, let's take one step back. Let's see the problems of PCC, uh, the current TCP. So the problem scenario for internet congestion control is pretty simple. Here, the servers will keep sending data packets, and then the client machines will feed back with ACKs. However, because of such simplicity, the servers can only have limited information about per packet level uh, pr limited per packet level information, like when is a packet sent, whether it's lost or received, and if it's received, when it's act. And usually, current TCP protocols will use this limited packet level information and map these events to some predefined behavior. And for example, one well-known uh, such hardwire mapping is Whenever a packet loss happens, or whenever the uh, server sees the RTT increment, it will cut the sending rate because uh, they have a correlation from these packet level events to in-network congestion. But that is not always the case in practice. So take packet loss as an example. Sure, for this client machine here, of course the congestion uh, induced by itself can cause packet loss. But the congestion can also be caused by some existing heavy flows in the network, and which should be the main reason for packet losses. And also, shadow buffer can also cause packet loss, and in some cases, the packet losses are just random. So all these four reasons for packet losses, they have different best responses. For example, based on the sources for congestion, the sender may only need to decrease the sender rate uh, may, need, may need to decrease the sending rate a lot, or it's okay to maintain the original sending rate. And for shallow buffer cause packet loss, you can decrease the sending rate only slightly. And in the case of random losses, it may be even possible to further increase the sending rate. So in that case, the fixed control behavior in TCP variants, like whenever packet loss happens, decrease the sending rate, that's obviously suboptimal. So different from traditional TCP, in PCC's framework, uh, we're, we're using some utility framework. And after acquiring the uh, packet level information 
corresponding to some sending rate R, we will aggregate that to some aggregated performance metrics like throughput or loss rates, and then calculate a utility function from it. And also, we don't make any decision just by one sending rate and its corresponding utility. Instead, we acquire utility corresponding to different sending rates, and then move the sending rate towards the direction that can lead to larger utility. By doing that, we're actually relying on a causal relationship from some sending rate to its corresponding utility. And that enables us to regard the network, the internet, as a black box. And the uh, and the rate change determination process is an online learning process where the sender only needs to selfishly maximize its own utility, which is like a non-cooperative game. Apparently, under this architecture, two crucial components in the design space are the utility function and the rate control algorithm. Given our goal of realizing consistently high performance, the utility function should capture the application performance objectives from limited reception results. And it should also, in theory, guarantee equilibrium state when there are multiple competing senders. And also, the rate control algorithm should be able to guarantee the different competing senders can actually reach such equilibrium state upon convergence. And also, it needs to react quickly to network changes. And our prior work have, have, has already validated the great promise uh, in this online learning scheme. So in a paper published in NSTI 2015, we proposed a protocol called PCC Allegro. And although as a first step, it already shows great performance gains, but it's still far from optimal. First, it used a loss-based utility function. And in that case, it cannot avoid the buffer blow, buffer blow problem caused by lack of latency awareness. And also, it used a greedy heuristic rate control algorithm, which is based on fixed rate change step size. So sometimes that may lead to slow convergence and also slow reaction in network dynamics. So here is a simple example to illustrate that. So there is a mapping from sending rate to the corresponding utility. And here the sending rate R1 is slightly smaller than the capacity C, and R2 is much larger. And in the case, the PCC algorithm uses a pretty small step size. Then when the sending rate is larger than the capacity, there will be a huge accumulation of RTT inflations and packet losses. Also, with a large step size, then there may be some repeated overshoot, which also cause RTT inflation and packet loss, packet loss rate. Therefore, in this paper, we propose a better design, PCC Vivace. And here, we leverage powerful tools from online learning theory and redesign the two crucial components in PCC's architecture. First, we propose a new utility function framework which is latency aware now, and also strictly concave to guarantee equilibrium state. And it also enables flexible equilibrium uh, manipulation when there are multiple senders with different utility functions. And also, we design a new control algorithm using gradient ascent style, and also we explicitly deal with the measurement noise from the performance metrics. First, let's look into our new utility function. Here, we use a strictly concave utility function. And uh, based on the literature from online learning and strict socially concave game, the strict concavity can guarantee unique, unique convergence equilibrium, even when multiple senders are competing with each other. And here is the utility function we used in this paper. It penalizes positive RTT gradients and also loss rate. And we have proved in the paper that by tuning these two parameters, you can realize like no latency inflation upon convergence, given a maximum number of competing senders and bottleneck capacity. And also, you can tolerate a theoretical bounds of maximum random loss rates by tuning another parameter. 
So in this paper, we set the random loss tolerance to 5%. And you can refer the detailed proof in our paper. Then the gradient ascent rate control algorithm is like that. So assume now the sender is using a sending rate x. So to determine what's the next sending rate, I will just probe two sending rates, one slightly smaller and another one slightly larger than x. And then obtain the utility gradient and proportionally translate that to the change of sending rate. And besides that, we also find that because the users have to calculate the performance metrics like packet loss rate, RTT gradient, and throughput from limited reception results. So occasionally, there may be some measurement noise which can impact the rate control performance. So we implement several uh, techniques to deal with that. And three examples here are first, we use linear regression to calculate the RTT gradient and then use a low pass filter on it to filter out the small network jitter. And then we use double check to deal with the issue when we find some occasional measurement results. So here is a simple exam example using the same in you know, the same utility and sending rate mapping. So assume now the sender is at sending rate R2, because it will have a large utility gradient. Then it will decrease the sending rate by a large amount and change the sending rate to some, some rates around R1. Then it will have smaller RTT gradients or N utility gradients. In this case, it will change, uh, increase the sending rate by a smaller amount. So by doing that, in theory, it can guarantee both faster conversions and also avoid performance oscillation. And more importantly, because of the combination of our straight concave utility function and gradient ascent rate control algorithm, we can realize the no regret guarantee in the online learning theory, which is a powerful lens for theoretical analysis. And I can show you one example of the insights we gain from this no regret guarantee analysis. And for the evaluation in the paper, we're using a UDT-based user space implementation. And we conduct both control experiments on Emulab and also real-world wireless downlink, uh, uplink downlink test using Amazon EC2 servers. And also, we built a PCC proxy in user, user space specifically for the video streaming. And we compare our new PCC Vivace design to the old PCC Allegro and BBR and also some related TCP variants. So first, let's see the latency awareness of our new utility function. We can see that we set up a 100 megabits per second and 3 millisecond RTT link on Emulab. And by varying the buffer size, the RTT inflation ratio for PCC Vivace is kept small. And actually, in all the cases here, the absolute RTT inflation is below 2 milliseconds. And in comparison, the other protocols, they either keep a close to full buffer or need a much larger buffer size to mitigate the inflation. For example, under the PBDP, uh, 2 BDP buffer size, the Vivace can achieve 90% smaller than BBR regarding the RTT inflation ratio. Then, to see how the reaction, how the new rate control algorithm performs, we emulate a changing network by periodi periodically changing the bottleneck, RTT, and random loss rate on the Emulab link. And first, because of the existence of random loss, TCP qubit cannot perform well. And then, we can see BBR occasionally have a sending rate close to zero. And we find that that will happen when, when that will happen when the RTT suddenly increases, which is kind of the reason of the separate bandwidth and uh, RTT probing in BBR. And then PCC Allegro performs much better. But when compared with our new PCC Vivace, we can see that it cannot decrease the sending rates quickly enough when the bottleneck bandwidth drops. So that will lead to more packet losses. 
And by combining the utility function and control algorithm, we use a four flow competing experiments. And we can see here, PCC Vivace achieves the best convergence stability, especially when compared with PBR and Cubic. And also, it is much better in convergence speed compared with PCC Allegro latency, which use a non-converging latency-based utility function in the PCC Allegro's paper, which shows the great benefits of our new utility function's latency awareness. Also, for TCP friendliness, we can see that BBR is not friendly with small buffer. And with a larger buffer, it's quite interesting that BBR keeps grabbing 50% of bandwidth no matter how many cubic flows are competing with just one BBR flow until the network becomes pretty congested. And for PCC Vivace, because we're a latency-based protocol, so it's not surprising that we're over-friendly to cubic when there are a limited number of cubic flows. But when the network becomes more congested, the RTD gradient will approach, zero, will approach zero. And in that case, PCC Vivace is quite smart. It finds that it cannot increase the utility no matter what. So it starts to being friendly and react purely based on the throughput and loss rate. And also, remember I said the no regret guarantee can provide us powerful lens for theoretical analysis. So one example is that it enables us to analyze the equilibrium state when you have multiple heterogeneous cylinders with different utility functions. For example here, by tuning the parameters in this utility functions, the two flows can achieve different bandwidth allocation. But we have to admit that the new PCC Vivace design do have limitations. For example, especially in extremely dynamic networks. And by using the Mahi-Mahi emulator, we find that in the LTE scenario, uh, PCC Vivace have low throughput. Although we can improve its performance by tuning utility functions, but we still think we do need more exploration in this area. And at last, here is a simple demo showing the comparison in video streaming between PCC proxy and TCP and UDP. And throughout the experiment process, we changed the uh, bottleneck bandwidth, the buffer size, and the random loss rate. We can see that PCC here keeps streams of video smoothly, but TCP and UDP will occasionally have degradation and lower video quality. And in, in our paper, we also compare the uh, video streaming pro performance of PCC Allegro, PCC Vivace, and BBR, and compare their like, re uh, video rebuffer ratio, in which case PCC Vivace is the best. So you can refer more details to our paper. And I also want to introduce some deployment efforts we're taking now. First, there is an open source release on GitHub for PCC uh, in this site. And it includes a UDT imp UDP imp imp implementation uh, we are using for the exper experiments in this paper. And it also have a quick implementation in collaboration with Google. And we're also working on a kernel implementation and also the another branch uh, specifically for tests using Pentium from Stanford. And besides that, there is also some other kernel implementation from Huawei and Vodafone called VACC, which is optimized for video over LTE. And this is an ongoing res research project with initial successful field tests. To sum up, in this paper, we designed PCC Vivace leveraging no regret, uh, no regret le learning for congestion control. Besides the consistently high performance as in our first version PCC Allegro, we, we also achieve latency awareness and also faster and more stable convergence. And because of the realization of no regret guarantee in online learning, we can achieve better TCP friendliness and also we can have more flex flexibility with different heterogeneous standards. Also, we want to thank for the generous pro project support from Google, NSF, and Huawei. So here it is. Any questions? Any questions?
Okay, I, I got a question. So um, uh, your work has some nice uh, theoretical analysis. Yep. I observe that uh, some of them are based on assumption that, uh, well, uh, there is only a single, for example, single bottleneck in the network. Okay, yeah. I wonder whether the conclusion made uh, will apply to the scenario where multiple bottleneck exist. Yeah, thanks for the question. And it's, a, it's actually a great, a great question. So first, uh, it, y yes, it is quite convenient to conduct the theoretical analysis using one bottleneck. Uh, in the, and also, for the multiple bottleneck cases, so when there are uh, different flows competing and they have different bottlenecks, then with, with respect to different bottleneck, the convergence probably still holds for PCC. And also, this is also another ongoing work in our, in, in, in our group. So the formulation of multi-bottleneck convergence is actually non-trivial. So we are actually now actively conducting more uh, including theoretic and experimental works on that area. Yeah. Hi, uh, Yong Qiang from uh, Microsoft Research. So uh, very good work. So I have one question about the uh, a scenario, uh, environment uh, which can be beneficial from this work. So from the evaluation, I saw that you evaluate the PCC revatcher performance on the, uh, several hundreds of megabits per second with relatively high uh, latency, say uh, tens of even hundreds of milliseconds. So I'm just wondering whether uh, PCC uh, can work with very high bandwidth, say uh, 40 giga or 100 giga uh, kids per, uh, uh, kids per second with very low latency, say uh, sub milliseconds or sub microseconds level. Mm -hmm. So will that online learning latency be a will be uh, uh, long enough to actually sacrifice the performance gain. Yeah. So mainly you're talking about the data center scenario, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's quite challenging for PCC because we need to aggregate enough information to calculate the utility. And for now, we don't have any implementation or test using data center scenario, but I think we should be pretty interested in that direction. Thanks. Uh, so I think I don't remember the detailed performance because we have an early stage implementation used, uh, in data center scenario, which is conducted by the Huji's group in our author list. And, but the challenging part in data center implementation scenario is that the RTT is pretty, pretty small. So the time you can uh, aggregate enough information to calculate the utility function with res respect to different sending rates is challenging. But in, in, the other, in other case, uh, data center has less jitter than internet congestion control. So in that case, the measurement noise may have less impact. So I think the performance gains in data center scenario should still exist. Yeah. Thanks. So. Um are you uh, going to continue to optimize PCC? Um, yeah, and we envision this which, as a long-term long -term project. So now we're still mainly focusing on internet congestion control. And also, I will continue working on the quick implementation and plan for a long-term real-world real production traffic test. And in, in the other case, I think for data center data center scenario implementation. Uh, the first step may be a better kernel, kernel level implementation. So that in that case, it should be faster than the user space implementation. We don't need to take too much CPU resources in that case. Yeah. Okay. So let's thank the speaker again. Thanks.